In this video, we'll use the three steps to sketch method to graph the basic sine graph y equals 2 times sine of 4x. So we have our outline on the left, our three steps, and here is a grid for us to use on the right. So the equation looks good. Let's jump in with step one, find the essentials. And we'll start by identifying A and B. Now remember, this is a basic sine equation, so it's in the form y equals A sine BX. All right, so that means our A is the coefficient in front of sine, so that's two. Okay, that means our amplitude is going to be two. And remember, that's the distance from the midline of the function up to a maximum and down to a minimum. All right, so we have A is two, and then B is the coefficient of X in the input of the sine function. So that'll be four in this case. So this will tell us two important things. First, remember that B is how many cycles of our graph happen between zero and two pi. So if we were to graph all of that for this equation, we would see four cycles of sine happening between zero and two pi. Okay, the second thing we use B for is to find the period. And we do that for sine by calculating two pi divided by B. So in this case, we have two pi divided by four, which reduces to pi over two. And remember, period is just the horizontal length of a cycle. So for a complete cycle, it'll take pi over two. All right, so now that we've done that analysis, we can choose scale labels. And remember that you can choose basically any label that you want, but with the three steps to sketch method, we do it in a very particular way, especially for our horizontal labels. And to find our horizontal labels, we just need to take the period and divide by four. Okay, so in this case, we have pi over two divided by four, or if it's easier for you to write times one fourth, that's the same thing. So we should be labeling our horizontal scale tick marks, counting by pi over eight. All right, now the vertical scale labels are usually a lot easier. Uh, we can simply use A and count the vertical tick marks using that value, or I think I'm even gonna just use one in this case. One is usually a nice scale label for the vertical axis. All right, so let's go ahead and label some of our grid. Let's label these tick marks and we'll start with our horizontal labels. So remember we're counting by pi over eight and the reason that we're doing this is so that all of our key points in the next step will align with our horizontal tick marks. It makes for a really nice, easy to read graph. All right, so we're counting by pi over eight. So that's one pi over eight, two pi over eight, which reduces to pi over four, three pi over eight, and four pi over eight, which reduces to pi over two. This is a good place to stop and check. Your fourth tick mark using this method should always match your period, and it does in this case. All right, so we'll stop there. Let's label the negative side of the horizontal axis so it'll be all the same values as before, just with negative. All right, and we have negative pi over two. That'll give us enough space for two nice cycles for this equation. And then we can label our vertical axis. So counting just by one, again, two would have been fine as well. Okay, so we've done our analysis. This is the bulk of the work. Now we can move on to step two where we'll plot our key points. And then all we'll have to do is step three, just make a quick sketch and repeat. Okay, so Step two is plot key points. And these are the key points in the base sign pattern. And so our base sign pattern is zero, maximum, another zero or x-intercept, minimum. Okay, and we can use that pattern. We see that we do not have a reflection, so we do know it's going to follow that uh, parent function, I sometimes like to call it, or that base pattern for sign. And we also know we're going to make use of A, A is two, and so that will help us set our Y coordinates for these key points. Okay, so our unshifted sine graph here, this is a basic sine graph, starts with a point on the origin. That's our first zero or X intercept. And like we said, it's not reflected, so we'll go up to a maximum next. And the Y coordinate is just the value of A. So A is two here, 
and we know our second key point will fall in line with our first horizontal tick mark, pi over 8, and it'll have a y-coordinate of 2, which we got from A. All right, then our next key point will be another 0, and that'll happen at our next horizontal tick mark. So we have another 0 at pi over 4. And our final point for this cycle of the pattern is going to happen with an x-coordinate at our next tick mark, so at 3 pi over 8, and a y-coordinate that's just the opposite of a. So our y-coordinate for this point will be negative 2. So you see that symmetry happening. Your graph should feel very balanced. All right, and we know that these four points, these key points, are enough to get one cycle of sine for this equation. Uh, let's go ahead and make a light mark that would start the next cycle that'll restart this pattern um, with another x-intercept at pi over 2. And that's just going to help us as we move into step 3, which is to sketch this graph and then repeat. So we sketch in our sine curve here. Okay, we'll put an arrow because it does keep going. And let's repeat for just one other cycle. Okay, so move four tick marks to the left of the origin, and that'll give you enough space to repeat the cycle. So we have zero, maximum, zero, minimum, connect or repeat. And so we can sketch this in as well. And hopefully you're seeing as we graph the second cycle how our scale label for the horizontal axis was very intentional in how all these key points align. So it is a nice, neat graph. All right, so that's how you use the three steps to sketch method to graph y equals two sine of four x. And in the description of the video, check out the other links. You can find more examples of graphing sine, um, and you can also find examples of the other trig functions.